Hey guys, welcome back to new video. In this video, I want to give you a full guide to use ProGuard or R8, so rather R8. Um, many people talk about ProGuard in combination with Android, but R8 is actually the standard for Android. That is what is implemented by default in Gradle. So I will teach you this. However, if you want to use ProGuard, then you can still do this for Android by just setting some Gradle options. If you wonder what the difference between these two is, um, there is no real big difference. Both are just tools to optimize your app before releasing it. So really every Android developer out there who wants to publish an app at some point needs to know about these things, about um, R8, about ProGuard, and just what these are and how to use them. And this single video will be enough to teach you what you need to know. What is R8 actually? As I already said, it's a tool that will optimize your app before releasing it. So it will actually do that in multiple ways. On the one hand, it will optimize your code and shrink it by just removing all unused functions, all unused classes, all unused fields, which will of course make your app smaller. And you might think now, why would I actually have functions or classes that I never use. I would remove them. And that is true, but the big advantage here of R8 is that it will also do that for your dependencies that you use, for your libraries that you include. So think about it. You very rarely need all the functions and all the classes you actually include with a dependency, with a library in your project. So that basically means that you can, that it doesn't really matter how many libraries you include in your project, because if you use R8, um, your code will always only end up with those classes and those functions that your specific project needs and not with all those functions um, that come from these libraries. So that is one way how it will um, shrink your code and your app size. Another way is that you can use it to shrink your resources so that it will just remove unused resources from your Android project, which will also just make your app a little bit smaller. Then it will also just optimize your code. It will, for example, remove unused if statements, so empty if statements, and just check if there is some code that can't be reached or so, and it will just remove that and make your files smaller that way. And the last thing how it will optimize your app is actually one of the most important ways here, and that is called code obfuscation. So what that means is it will take all your classes, all your functions, all your variables, and rename those to short unreadable names before building the release app or actually for the release app. And that is actually very important if you plan on publishing your app because um, everybody who can download your app can also potentially reverse engineer your app and search in your app how it is programmed, um, what its weaknesses are. And it's just a very important security measure to obfuscate your code. So to rename all these classes, functions and variables to unreadable names. So those persons who actually want to reverse engineer your app have it a lot harder. And really that is so much harder if you don't know what a specific class does. So in the end, you can't prevent people from reverse engineering your app because they of course have your APK and they can do whatever they want with it, but you can make their life a lot harder with R8. So those were the big advantages R8 and ProGuard have. Now I actually want to get into Android Studio and show you how we can actually apply these principles in our projects. So here I am back in Android Studio in an empty project. And what we want to do is we want to open up our build.cradle module app file. Because in this file, we want to declare that we want to use all of these optimizations I talked about before. So if we scroll down here, you can see there is a build types block included by default. And inside of this build types block, we have a release block. That means that all the options, the Gradle options we define inside of this release block will only be applied to the release build of our app. So these are not applied to the debug build of our app. So if we would just 
launch our app here in the Android emulator, then these options would not be applied because by default, we launch the debug build of our app. And the release build is just the build that we create before we upload our app to Google Play. Because of course, when we debug our app, then we don't want this obfuscation. We don't want that our classes are renamed because that of course makes it harder to um, find out errors. If you have a stack trace and you just can't read the class names, you don't know which class that actually is. And yeah, as you can see, instead of this release block, there is an option minify enabled and that is set to false by default. What does that mean? That is actually what will manage most of the stuff with R8. So if we set this to true here, then it will on the one hand optimize your code. Um, as I said, it will remove unused if statements, unused try catch and all that stuff. It will just optimize your code. It will remove all unused classes, all unused functions also from your libraries and it will also obfuscate your code. So this option, if you set this to true, then it will rename all your classes and functions for your release build. And all of that will make your app a lot smaller in size. So you should always set this to true if you plan on releasing your app. Um, but there's also another option that you can set to true, which is shrink resources, which will just, well, shrink your resources. It will remove unused resources, as I already explained before. And then we have another option, which is ProGuard files. And here it just defines some file path to a ProGuard rules.profile. Mm. We can find this file here, also in our Gradle scripts folder. Here it is, ProGuard rules.pro. And if we open this, you can see that it's just an empty file. Well, these are just comments. But inside of this file, we can declare rules for ProGuard. So we essentially use R8 here to optimize our code, but R8 also uses these ProGuard rules files. Um, and here we can, for example, declare classes we don't want to obfuscate. We want to. We can declare classes we don't want to optimize and all that stuff. And now you might ask why that is actually useful to not obfuscate some classes because you actually usually think that you want to obfuscate everything, but that is not true. Let's think of, for example, of network model classes. So you just define some data classes that you use to parse some JSON into. And these are classes you usually don't want to obfuscate. Because if you would do that, the problem would be that the field names of the JSON response must be the same as the field names of your data class. And if your code is obfuscated, that means that the field names of your data class will be renamed. And then Kotlin or Android Studio won't know which fields from the JSON class or the JSON response it should par parse into which fields of your data class. So that means we should add these data classes here in this ProGuard rules file. So our eight will know, okay, I shouldn't obfuscate these classes. So whenever you actually um, build your release app, then I would always try it out before you upload it to Google Play. So just because an app works in debug build doesn't mean it works in release build as well. Because if you forgot about these things, um, then your app will crash. So I actually also want to show you how you can do that. There are a lot of rules you can actually, or a lot of options you have with these rules. I can show you all of that in this tutorial. Um, there is also, I'm sure there is a documentation about that, but I will show you how you can actually declare to keep specific classes to not obfuscate those. First of all, I want to sync Gradle, click on sync now. And then I will just create a package here in our root package called whatever network. And in this package, we want to create some data class. So I will actually just create one here to show you how this works. Let's say we have a data class, um, for example, a news response. So let's say you use some news API and this news response class here just contains some fields. For example, the title of the news article, which is a string. 
and of course some more, but I will just leave it like that. And if you would now just leave this minify enable to true in your release block and you create the release build and you just leave it like that, then your app would crash at the point where data is parsed to this news response class because it tries to parse the title from the JSON to this title here. But this title would actually not be named title in your release build, instead it would be renamed to something unreadable. And to just declare this class as a class we don't want to obfuscate, we have two options. On the one hand, we can just add the keep annotation here, which will just tell ProGuard, hey, or R8, hey, we want to keep this class, don't obfuscate this. Now, if you have a lot of data classes, that is annoying to always add this keep annotation. So you can do this as a quick way if you only have a specific class, but to actually add more classes to your pool, you don't want to obfuscate, you can use these ProGuard rules here. Because with these rules here, it's actually very easy to just um, declare that you want to keep all classes in a specific package. So for example, in the package that contains all your network models. Let's do that here below the comments we define minus keep. We want to keep a class or multiple classes. And now we just define the package name. So come that peer coding, our a tutorial, and then the network package. And inside of that package, you can see we could add the news response class, then it would only keep this class. But we can also just put an asterisk here, and then it will keep all classes inside of that package. And you could optionally also put in curly brackets here and also define some um, classes or rather functions you want to keep in this package. So then only the functions that you declare here will be um, will not be obfuscated and the rest will be obfuscated. But we can also just put an asterisk and a semicolon here to include all functions and classes. And that is actually the whole magic of R8. It's really not that complicated. It gets a little more complicated if you have um, very special rules you want to declare here. But in most cases, you actually only want to keep some classes here. And then it's enough to know these, this line, basically. Um, now you might wonder, how can you actually build that release build of your app? Because by default, if you build your app, it will build the debug build, not the release build. To switch that, we go to build and click on select build variant. And you can see a window will open up here where um, it says debug, which is the active build variant. We can click on that and select release. And then it will automatically sync Gradle. And now it is set to release build. So when we now go to build and go to build bundles and APKs, we can build our app bundle, which I always prefer of APK. Um, which is just a newer way of building something to release it. Um, so Google Play will actually make some optimizations here for specific devices. So your app will be smaller for um, your users if you use bundles. We click on that and then your project will rebuild. Let's wait. And now that is done. This is not a release build you could upload to Google Play. For that, you would need to generate a signed bundle or APK here um, and sign that with a key store. That is too much for this tutorial um, and also not part of this tutorial. Anyways, you just now built an Android app bundle out of your app. And this, if this was, if this was signed, you could upload that to Google Play. But now you might wonder what actually happens if your app crashes for some of your users and they submit the crash report. Because the users of your app, of course, have the release build on their phone. And if they submit the, the crash report, then this crash report will contain the obfuscated code. So it will contain um, the classes renamed to unreadable names. And that is very difficult to impossible to find an error in that obfuscated code. So how does it actually work if you want to understand your own release code, but nobody else? Luckily, if we use R8, um, it will generate a so-called mapping file that is just a text file that contains which classes and which functions, which fields were renamed to what. So with this file, 
you can just take that and also upload it with your Android bundle to Google Play. And Google Play will automatically um, basically translate the error message from the user to the error message that is actually readable for you. And you will find that file if you go to this Android here, select project to see all of your files. You open this um, your project folder and here is a build folder which was generated on build. We go inside, oops, not actually that one. We go to app, not this build folder. We need to go to app and this build folder here. Here we have a folder outputs um, and a folder mapping and release. And inside of this release folder, you can see there is a mapping.txt file. And if we open that, you can see it used R8 as the compiler. And here you can see all the classes and how they were basically renamed. So you can see the cancelable class or interface, whatever that is, was renamed to A.A.A. .A .A. The component activity class was renamed to, um, I don't know actually how to read this file. But you can see um, it's basically a mapping file. This was mapped to this. So if you just see these short letters and names or whatever, then it's very hard to actually find an error in your code. But with this mapping file, you can easily do that. And it's very important to back up such a mapping file for each release you upload to Google Play because these are just overwritten each time you build your app. And that's if you just forget to, um, cho to copy this over somewhere else, then it will basically be lost. And then you have no way of translating the, the crash to, you, to your code actually. So that is it for this video. I hope this was understandable for you. If not, then tell me that below. Also if so, but if not is more important to me because that helps me to improve my way of teaching. Also, if you are looking for more advanced Android courses, check out the first link in this video's description, which will lead you to my website. And there you will just find more advanced Android courses and that is also a way you can support me and my work. If you want a little discount on these courses, you can use the discount code philip 15 and these will, this will just give you 15% off of all my courses there. So I hope you like this. See you in the next video. Have a nice day. Bye bye.